Hey folks, I'm out here at Old Ford Farm again, and today I'm going to try to be a little bit more organized about the video. Uh, first I want to tell you a little bit about the setup of the farm, because I've learned a lot more about it since the last time I was here. This farm is arranged into five different blocks, and the blocks allow the farmer to do crop rotation. And crop rotation is important because every crop has particular pests that are associated with it and particular nutrient needs. And if you keep planting the same crop in the same place year after year, you will build up the populations of the pests that affect that crop and you will deplete the nutrients that that crop needs. So um, instead of, you know, just sort of randomly putting 45 different crops in different places each year. They are um, basically organized into blocks of things that are alike, things that are basically things that are in the same family. So on this farm, there are five different blocks. There's a cucurbit block, which has cucumbers and squash and pumpkins and things in the cucurbit family. There's a brassica block, that has broccoli and cabbage and kale and arugula and all of the things in the brassica family. There's a carrot block that has things that are uh, related to carrots and a few other miscellaneous things, including um, carrots and beets and parsley. There is a lettuce, pea, allium block that has all of the alliums, including onion and garlic and shallots, and peas and beans, and lettuce. And those are all kind of clumped together because uh, the farmer plants smaller amounts of those three things. And then the fifth block is a nightshade block. And nightshades include tomatoes, potatoes, eggplants, and other uh, nightshade crops. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go on kind of a circular tour, starting in the carrot block and walking through each block and showing you what's growing. But the other thing that I want to talk about just a little bit is diversity. And this is a very diverse farm, and uh, she grows a lot of different crops. And there are a couple of reasons for that. One of them is marketing. Um, and she markets through CSA, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture. Basically, a family or a person pays up front for a weekly share of the harvest. And when CSA members do that, they want to get all of the different vegetables they might eat in a week. So. We'll talk about that when we look at CSA distribution a little bit later, but uh, basically we're trying to make sure that every family has lots of different things, a variety of different foods each week, so they don't have to go to the grocery store to get any vegetables. The other reason that diversity is important is for pest control, and on an organic farm like this, there are three ways that you can control pests. One is chemical control, and that means spraying, and she really doesn't do much of that. There are organic sprays that you can use for pests, but they're expensive, and it's time-consuming to do that. Another is cultural control, where you can arrange particular things on the farm to make sure that you avoid pests. And, and there are a number of different ways that she does this here that we've already started looking at in previous videos, including using remay and insect netting. Um, mulch is also a cultural control, and I'll talk more about mulch when we get to that section of the field, but the biggest pest that we have on farms is not insects, it's weeds. And that's why farmers spray more herbicide than any other pesticide more than insecticide or anything else and on an organic farm you can't spray for weeds so you have to control them somehow and here they do it through tillage and through mulch and so we'll, we'll talk about the mulch and the other um, in addition to 
cultural and uh, chemical control. Uh, the other control method is biological control. And there are different ways that you can influence the biology of a crop. But one of the most effective ways is with diversity. So you'll see here there aren't big sections of any one crop. So if an insect comes in that eats tomatoes, it will be in the tomato block and it might get the tomatoes, but the row next to it is potatoes or maybe in some cases basil. And so the insects are kind of trapped on an island there. They can't just walk through the entire thing. And that's another reason that diversity is really important. If you get a really bad pest infestation, you might lose your tomatoes, but you still have cucumbers and broccoli and peppers and 50 different other crops that are there to support the farm that year. So I'm gonna pick the camera up and we're gonna start walking through and talk about the different crops that are in each block and we're going to start with the carrot block. So one of the things that you'll see is that there are some things that are planted in small amounts that are kind of scattered throughout. Um, but here in this long row here we have parsley And then over here, I'm not sure what this green is. I'm gonna to have to ask, but it looks like it might be a young planting of Swiss chard. And then here we see some older Swiss chard under insect netting. And I think we looked at this last week. This is rainbow chard. It's, it's plants that have different colored petioles just to be pretty and to provide even a little bit more diversity. And here we have a row that hasn't been planted yet. And then here we have spinach under insect netting. Here we have cilantro, dill, and cilantro and we looked at this last time and it's really grown up a lot this is getting close to being ready to harvest in this next row we have carrots and carrots are a direct seeded crop you can see that they are um, a lot of them very close together and sometimes a farmer will come in and thin those they try to get them planted so that there's just one every inch or two so that they don't crowd each other out. And then another planting of carrots right here. There is lettuce and lettuce is one of the crops that you'll kind of see scattered throughout the farm. But again, there's diversity here. Four different kinds of lettuce and this allows the customers to have a variety and it also each one of these varieties of lettuce will have different nutrient needs and different uh, kinds of resistance to pests and diseases and so diversity is really a theme that you'll see throughout this farm i think that this is a little bit later planting of dill and cilantro yeah you can see the dill down here, there's a lot of weeds in this. This is chickweed, which is one of our forage crops. Uh, a lot of the weeds that grow on the farm are actually edible. And even though farmers spend a lot of time getting rid of them, um, a lot of these things are plants that you can actually eat. We'll see others during the year. And then this row is cilantro. And not sure what's under here. This big empty block here is the cucurbit block. This is where cucumbers and squash and pumpkins and stuff will go. And it hasn't been planted yet. Those things usually get planted later in the year. So there's a big long 
block of that here. I imagine that some of this was cover crop the last time we were here. She basically plants cover crop whenever um, something is taken out of the field. But the entire field, two acres here, is planted every year. These, I think, are watermelons under the insect netting here. This is still the cucurbit block. And these are winter squash under the insect netting here. One of the things that every, every crop has its own special pests that love it. And uh, usually when we are protecting cucurbits, we're protecting them from cucumber beetles which won't, they don't eat the whole plant, but they chew little holes in the leaf and they can be really prolific and really damaging. They can also, if they get too high populations, they will actually chew on cucumbers and you'll see kind of little scabby scars on your cucumbers. So look for that this summer. And now we're getting into the brassica block and some of it hasn't been planted yet but here you can see kale under insect netting and we talked about last week I think the um, the reason that you net kale it's usually for swede midge and flea beetles and you can maybe see that the leaf on this plant really doesn't have a whole bunch of holes in it. It's beautiful, it's tender looking, it's clean. That is only true because this is under insect netting. If it was just out here on the farm, there's no way that that would be the case. It would be all chewed up by flea beetles, which doesn't make it inedible. It just um, makes it not particularly pretty. Not sure what is in here, but you can see that the entire brassica block is covered with row cover. And if you pull the row cover back in different places, I will do right here, you can see different brassicas in here. And this one right here is kohlrabi. Kohlrabi is a brassica, it's very closely related. In fact, it's the same genus and species as cabbage and broccoli. But instead of having a flower that we eat like broccoli or a leaf that we eat like cabbage, it has a stem that we eat that becomes large and stores the sugar and starch from the plant. So this block is all brassicas under row cover, protecting it from flea beetles and swede midge. We have an area here that's still in cover crop from last season. And not sure what will go in there yet. And now we're going to make the turn for the nightshades. And nightshades, as I said before, include tomatoes, potatoes, eggplants, and other things. And this row here is eggplants, and you'll notice something about this, this group right here, and that it is covered with deep hay mulch. And as I mentioned before, the reason for that is to protect against weeds and you can see the plants just starting to pop out of this hay mulch. This is a pepper. This is a row of peppers here. Pe peppers are in the nightshade family. And then in this next row here we have sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are an unusual crop in that they are planted as slips. Basically they're little cuttings of the stem. And you can actually see with this one where the, well, maybe not, but uh, sometimes you can see where the, the cutting of the stem was made. And 
this one's just starting to leaf out and these don't look particularly good right now because they were sitting out as slips for however long traveling in a box to get here um, but they will rebound pretty quickly here's one where you can actually see where the, the stem has been cut on the top that was the middle of the vine sweet potatoes grow like a vine so we continue with the nightshade block here um, this is basil and basil is not a nightshade but um, basil is something that is a good companion plant for tomatoes and other nightshades so because it doesn't it's not a big family it's stuck here in the nightshade block and then this which I showed you last week and I didn't really know what it was this large area here covered with straw mulch this is potatoes and on many farms the farmers plant the potatoes and then hill them they they will cover over basically cover over the bottom of the plant once they grow up with soil and that's because potatoes are modified stems and they will grow new potatoes wherever the stem is covered but she doesn't do that she's done a lot of experimenting with potatoes and she's found that this system where you plant the potatoes and then cover them with deep mulch is much more effective at weed control every time that you hill the potatoes you're bringing up new weed seeds that can potentially overwhelm your crop and so you can see the potatoes emerging here this is a really nice stand of potatoes and all of this mulch will be controlling weeds in this block for the rest of the year it's really heavy mulch the other important thing about um, mulching potatoes is that potatoes develop uh, if if they are exposed to sunlight they turn the, the potato itself turns green and they develop a toxic chemical called solanin and solanin is something you really want to avoid on potatoes it's a powerful carcinogen and so in in order to not have them exposed to sunlight on this farm this is why they do the deep mulch on other farms that's part of the benefit of hilling which is just pushing more soil over here you can see peas that we looked at last time and these peas look beautiful and healthy um, and what she has started to do is to trellis them and the way that she's trellising these peas is just as they grow up by tying a double row of string that one one on either side and it looks like they're almost ready for another row of this string you can see that in this next row as well that they have gotten two double rows of string so far tied to these poles that are going down the row and that keeps them upright keeps them off the ground there are some varieties of pea that just kind of grow as a bush and there are some that grow as a vine and have to be tied up. These are peas that have to be trellised. This is garlic. We will talk more about garlic when it starts to scape, when it starts to develop its flowers. There is lettuce in here and we are um, in the allium block now as I said the allium block also on this farm includes the um, peas and beans the legumes legumes are a family of nitrogen fixing plants um, many of which we eat and on this farm they're also using a lot of legumes as cover crops in order to get nitrogen free nitrogen into the soil from the atmosphere so here you can see lettuce and the rest of this allium block is covered lettuce is planted kind of all over the farm because 
in order to not have it all in one big group to control pests and also because uh, it's not a big family that gets its own block. These are onions underneath insect netting being protected from thrips. And then there's a planting of what may be shallots or leeks here. These actually might be leeks. I'm not 100% sure. And there's a couple of more rows of that. So the allium is actually a pretty big area here, stretching from the garlic all the way across all of these rows that are covered with insect netting to protect it. Next we have another legume. These are green beans. And you can see the green beans here. They look really nice and healthy. They don't really need insect netting. more lettuce a couple of different kinds and then the rest of this block is still waiting to be planted or is still cover cropped and we looked at this a little bit last time but it's grown up since this cover crop this is a typical cover crop mix that is oat and pea Peas are legumes. They fix nitrogen from the atmosphere, which is the most, which is the element that plants are most commonly deficient in and that they need the most of. So this helps to not have to bring in as much fertilizer and helps plants to grow lush and quickly. And then the, the oats help to provide organic.